Okay, so question 10. And um, this one, it's worth 12 marks. So you've got a fair bit of time. You've got about almost a quarter of an hour to do this in the exam. But none of this is any different to any of the other coordinate geometry stuff which you've seen in the previous exams. So the first thing, it says an equation for L2. Whenever you're asked to find an equation, the first thing you write down is y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. And you need two pieces of information. You need to have a coordinate, which lies on the line, and you need to have the gradient. So if we've got L2, um, we know that Q lies on L2. We've got the coordinate, which is 37. However, what we don't have is the gradient. Um, but we do know that P is 0, 2, and we know that Q is 3, 7. And we also know that these lines are perpendicular. So if those two lines are perpendicular, if we know the gradient of, of, sorry, of this line, we can find the perpendicular gradient for L2. So first of all, let's work out the gradient for L1. Now the way you work out the gradient is, I'd always do it this way, I'd never do the y2 minus y1 over using that method. Um, I think it's laborious and it also means that you're not completely understanding and it's easy to make a mistake. But this one here, uh, P is 0 across and Q is 3 across, that's a horizontal distance of 3. P is 2 up and Q is 7 up, so that's a, horizontal, so that's a vertical distance of 5. So therefore, and we can see that it's sloping upwards. Again, doing the diagram, we can see that it's sloping upwards. So therefore, the gradient of L1 is 5 over 3. So therefore, the perpendicular gradient, you need to flip this upside down. You also need to change the sign, so it's going to be minus 3 over 5. So now, we've got our equation, y minus y1. We've got our gradient, which is minus 3 fifths, and we've got our coordinate. So we just substitute it in. So we've got y minus our y coordinate, which was 7 equals minus 3 fifths x minus the minor x coordinate, which was 3. And they want it in the format ax plus by plus c equals 0, which means they don't want any fractions. So the first thing we do to get to make it slightly easier on ourselves is to get rid of this divided by 5. So we times the other side by 5, then we're going to multiply this out here. So that's going to be 5y minus 35 equals minus 3x plus 9. And then they want it in this format here, so let's get everything over to make x positive. So that's going to be 3x plus 5y, well, if we bring it over to the left hand side. Then we're going to take away 9, so that's going to be minus 44 equals 0. And 5, reasonably straightforward marks if you've done your revision. So now what we're going to do is find the exact coordinates of r. So r is when it crosses the x-axis. Now when anything crosses the x-axis, the y value is 0. So what we're going to do is, we've done part A here, part B, we're going to make y 0. So it's going to be 3x plus 5 lots of 0 minus 44 equals 0. So that's going to be 3, if we bring this over to the other side, 3x equals 44. So x equals 44 over 3. And that's the x coordinate, but we want the exact coordinate. So 44 over 3 across, of course, 0 up. Now, the next thing we're going to do is work out the exact area of the quadrilateral ORQP. Again, if we have a look at this here, ORQP, so O to R. So it's that thing there, which looks awkward. But what we can do is we can work out the area of the entire triangle here. It shouldn't be too much hassle. And then we're going to get rid of this triangle here. Then we're left with ORQP. So what we need to do to work out the area of the triangle is work out where L2 crosses the y-axis up here. Because we know that it goes through at 44 over 3 there. So to find out where it goes through the x-axis, so the y-axis, we make x equal 0. So we're going to have 0 plus 5y equals 44. So y equals 44 over 5. So now what we're going to do 
is to work out the area, we're going to do base times height divided by 2. So the area of the triangle equals 44 over 5 times by 44 over 3 and then divide that by 2. So that's going to be um, so we'll do 44 times 44 then divided by 2. So we could do 22 times by 44. So 4 twos are 8, 4 twos are 8. So that's going to be 968. And then that's over 15. So the other triangle is 968 over 15. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get we're going to work out that triangle there. So we know that this here is 2, and then this coordinate here is 44 over 5. So 44 over 5, you can also say that is 8 and 4 fifths. So the height of this, we have the blue triangle here. The height of this blue triangle is going to be 6 and 4 fifths, because this is we get rid of the 44 over 5 and replace it with 8 and 4 fifths. So this height here, the difference is going to be 6 and 4 fifths. And the coordinate of Q there is 3, 7. So that's 3 across. So therefore, if we consider the triangle... We've got 6 and 4 fifths there, and we've got the height there, which is 3. So we're going to do 6 and 4 fifths, which we can also write as 34 over 5. So 34 over 5 times by 3, 3 over 1, and we divide that by 2, so doing the area of that triangle. So that's going to be 100 and... So 100 and... 2 over 5, then divided by 2, so that's going to be 51 over 5. So we've got the area of the big triangle, which is 968 over 15. Take away um, 51 over 5. If we make those equivalent fractions, that's going to be 153 over 5. So 968 over 15, take away... 153 over 15 is going to be 815 over 15, which of course you can simplify down, but it doesn't ask you to.